Hey, it's Bob Duffy from Intel here, and I'm in the A1111 Web UI interface for Stable Diffusion, and I'm excited to show you guys how to generate amazing images using this tool, powered by the Accelerate with Open Vino script and using an Intel Arc GPU. But before we get into that, we gotta talk about timelines. My timeline versus yours, because it's the fall of 2023 for me, and if you're in the far distant future, things may be very different. Gen AI is a new space and it's moving quite a bit fast. So be mindful of that, that videos like this are a moment in time. Okay, so I also have to tell you that this is not an installation instruction video. This is a video about how to use A1111 with the Accelerate with OpenVINO script but I'll give you a little bit of background to help you out to move in that direction. So to learn how to install, um, you can go over to my article here. If you go to arc.intel.com, uh, scroll down, you'll see my beautiful face down there. Uh, in this article that I wrote on um, three ways to generate um, AI, let's go to, into that article here. And in there, you'll see an area for um, uh, A1111 um, with a nice uh, alchemist character there. Um, scroll down to that and you'll find a link and that will take you over to this article here, which is part of the GitHub repository. And this is where you can download uh, the code in order to uh, install A1111 that will use the Accelerate with OpenVINO script. And it's really pretty simple, you follow these instructions. Once you have uh, 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 Git installed and Python installed, this is all you do and you're ready to go to move forward with the demo. So let's get going. Okay, here we are back in Automatic 11.11, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do to get this working with your Intel hardware is to go down to this scripts area down here and sell, uh, select Accelerate with OpenVINO. If you don't have that an option, then you probably didn't install the OpenVINO version of A111.11. So go back to the overview where I talk a bit about that or check the link in the description below. Um, or you're so far in the future that everything has changed. <laughs> but anyways, for everybody else, let's go ahead and move forward here. The next thing you're gonna do is select a device. You can select your CPU or your GPUs. GPU zero is almost always going to be your integrated graphics and GPU one should be my Intel Arc GPU. So within task manager, I can see these things. GPU zero is my integrated graphics and then this is my Arc uh, A770. Um, so with that selected, um, I'm gonna check a, a couple of other things. I'm gonna do something that's a little bit more realistic. You don't have to do this. So I'm gonna select the DPM++ uh, uh, 2M Keras because it's gonna work with the model I'm using. Um, and then I'm gonna put in some, these are the prompts I use almost all the time. This is kind of my, hey, I wanna start, I wanna test something, see if things work. This is what I do. It's man with a beard and a modern hairstyle. And I wanna make sure that, um, <laughs> you know, this is work. So uh, NSFW is good. We, we want to keep everything on the up and up uh, and get good. And I don't want it to look like a cartoon or a painting or anything like that. So I put those words in there. Um, so with that, um, I, I think we're good to go. I'm going to uh, do a, um, a count of four because I want to show you something. The very first time that we do this, it's going to be a little slower. So that very first image takes a bit. There's some compile time for OpenVINO to get going. Then it caches everything and each other image or each use of this is going to be uh, much speedier. So let's hit generate and let me uh, switch over here to my command window wherever you went. There you go. Okay, so this this is a window that you're gonna see used quite a bit here. And that's what I mean, this one is slower. 2.29 iterations for the second, uh, for the first image. And then each of the other images is about 9.5 iterations per second. Uh, and that's all hitting my GPU, my Intel Arc A770. And we are just about done. So there we are. We have some fantastic images. We, we've done four of them here. Let's look at what they've, they've done here. It looks like a guy with a beard, and these all look pretty fabulous. They're, they're fantastic looking. Now, you must be saying, if you've done this before, or you've seen Stable Diffusion 1.5 images before, you may be going, hey, how come that looks good? I mean, my stuff looks wonky. The ears are all, the eyes are sideways, and things don't look so good. Well, it's because I'm using a specific model here and checkpoint that's tailored for 
uh, realistic images. So if you look over here up in my checkpoint, I selected the realistic vision uh, model. And um, I, I've run a few of these here and you, you can look at these outputs, same exact prompt, same exact seed, and these things look different depending upon what checkpoint you're using. And this is part of the power of using something like A1111, is there's a whole community of people out there creating custom checkpoints and models based off of Stable Diffusion 1.5 that will tailor the output towards a certain thing or style that you're looking for. So these are the ones that we just did, um, and this is realistic vision. Um, down here, these ones look a little bit more cartoonish, more kind of like animated characters. Um, this is Rev animated. Um, and then down here, this is really just the stable diffusion uh, base here. And you can see that sometimes it gets a bit wonky and that's because um, the 1.5 base, it has so much information in it for doing line art, illustrations, photorealistic stuff. Um, it it's really doesn't know exactly what you want. So you're gonna have to do really well with the prompting to get what you need or you can use a specific model. Now you can go to uh, civitai.com to find various checkpoints and models. Um, I su suggest going to the models area and, and looking for anything that's a checkpoint, uh, not a LoRa, we may discuss that in, in a future video, but find something that's a checkpoint, that's the style that you're looking for. So if you're looking for something that's super realistic, you might choose this one, Epic Realism. Choose something that's been downloaded quite a bit, that's rated really well from the communities. Rev Animated was the one that I showed you that was the one that looks a little bit more stylistic, more like um, an illustration or something animated but it's also pretty pho photorealistic too. So if you're doing some fantasy art and things like this, this one might be a very good one to choose. Um, so what you do is if you want to use one of these, you just download it. And let me just make sure I'm switched over to my proper window here for one second. Okay, there we go. So what you're going to want to do is um, make sure that you are in your Stable Diffusion folder. Once you've downloaded, move it into the Models folder, not the Modules folder, the Models folder. And then within Models, go into Stable Diffusion, and this is where you're going to place it. So you can see I've got Rev Animated already here. Now, once that is done, oops, I clicked something by accident. Um, once that is done, you're going to go over to um, refresh and then that item will be available to you here and then you can immediately use it. Now, as you switch models, that first image that you create again uh, using um, A1111 may take a little bit longer to do and then all the other images uh, should work out just fine. Okay, so what I want to do now is switch things up a little bit and try something and I'll just do a little bit more because this is A1111 and we should have more control over what we're doing. We're not just going to write a prompt and click to click a button. That's the power of this. So I'm putting in some prompts here uh, that match what I have in my article here when I created that alchemist character for the uh, A1111 section of my article. Um, so, and I'm going to switch the model over here to uh, Cyber Realistic. So I downloaded that um, I, and I, I selected this. Um, it also, when you read the description, uh, recommends a VAE, which is going to refine the image a little bit. So I'm going to select that one. Um, and I think everything else is good to go. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to change my seed here. Now you can get the seed information. If you go to any image here, you'll see that there's information down below and the seed information is included. So as you go through these things and you find something that you like and you kind of want to start um, uh, fine tuning that image, maybe through your prompts or other means, um, you can copy this and then put it over into the seed. So I'm going to go and uh, select a seed here that I used and I liked, and we're going to stick with four. Now um, I'm going to click this here and this is going to do the same thing as it did before where the very first one is going to take a little bit longer um, and that's because we changed the model. Um, there that one goes and then the next one should go a bit faster. Yeah, we're back up to nine plus iterations per second on this and we'll just uh, work through those. And you can see that stuff hitting the um, GPU here. So this is um, each one of those, there's, there's four of them. They're gonna hit the GPU there. 
yeah, we've got some pretty good images here. Uh, these look great. Let's let's uh, get some more detail here. Love these. Uh, these are all different, varying. They they look great. But um, this is my favorite. Uh, I like this one. The composition's great. She's kind of holding this orb, and it kind of looks like there's an A there, uh, nicely bat lit uh, and everything. So. Um, but you know, uh, the, the face in, in comparison to the others, it just doesn't look like it has as, as much detail, especially in the eyes. And so we can adjust that. And so uh, that's the next step of this is, is how you can um, have discrete control using A1111 uh, powered with the Accelerate um, with OpenVINO and an Intel Arc. So what we're going to do is, is select that one there and then um, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, send in paint and that's going to bring it over to the next tab here This is the image to image tab and then it gives us this image here with this brush And so if I click on this I get a brush and I can adjust the size of the brush up or down And this allows me to mask an area that I want to uh, use for in painting and in painting means that you're going to replace an area masked with something else um, and it's going to be driven by your prompts. So what we want to do is just refine um, the, the features of the face here a little bit just right there. Um, I'm going to keep it within the constraints of the face um, but just select that area there and then um, let me use another prompt here. Let me grab my prompts that I know worked <laughs> um, and we don't need to do all of this here. We just need to talk about the specific area. So face of a woman, detailed eyes. Uh, the negative prompt is just fine. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to move this back to the realistic vision without a VAE. Let's keep it simple. Um, but before I get a little bit too ahead of myself, um, since we moved over to the image to image tab and we are doing in painting, we also have to select the accelerate for open Vino script here. Uh, just, just like we did on the uh, text to image. So I want to select my GPU one, uh, select the same scheduler, uh, and then I'm ready to move on with the rest of this stuff. Now, when you do this, what, you, what you're what you doing is, like I said, you're painting a particular area. Um, and so some of the settings that you're going to need to be uh, working with are these first few here. Mask mode in painted is fine. That's exactly what we're doing. Masked content is what is it going to be working with? Um, and when I say original, it's going to be working with that information under the mask. So things like the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, um, we want to retain some of that information. We're going to diffuse it, add noise to it, and create uh, a new image based upon our prompt. So we're going to say, yes, let's use the original information. And I'm not going to um, repaint the whole area. I'm just going to do the masked area. I want to do that at 512 by 512. Now the entire image is 512 by 512, um, but we are saying this new image that you're creating is 512 by 512. So it's actually going to have more resolution in order to create that image. And then it'll work it into it and it'll seem seamless. Um, let's go ahead and do four batch. We'll retain our seed. And then denoising strength is probably the most important setting here. It's at, set at 0.75. I'm going to set it to 0.3 uh, for illustrated purposes. The lower you set it, the closer the image is going to be to the original information underneath. And then if you set it to 1, it's going to be very different. Uh, it's going to try to do um, the image based upon your prompt. Um, so I'm going to set it to 0.33 and we're going to see if we can get more detail than what we had before. Let's go ahead and kick that off. And we should see that starting here. Now, since we started with OpenVNO again, we're over in a new tab. It's a new process. Uh, we do have that recompile time going on. So that's why this one is a little slower, uh, 1.2 iterations per second. And then the rest of these will be faster. Those are above nine iterations per second. So if we're about halfway done here, and just to remind everybody, just so we can see what we were doing, this is the image that we're trying to add more detail in just around the face area. So we're trying to improve that. And it looks like we got it. Okay, so let me open this up. Yeah, I do see more detail, especially um, around the eyes. And if I click through each one, minor differences. And you can probably hardly see that. It's, it's almost imperceivable, but each one there and there is different. Now, um, you may want more variation than that, um, so I'm going to up this to 0.55 and we're going to run this again 
And just by doing this, adding more variation, more noise into it, essentially deviating from the original information, that can add more uh, detail itself. Um, so we, we've got that kicked off. Now each one of these is running at uh, nine plus iterations per second. Um, but you know, in painting does take a little bit longer because you're doing a little bit more. Um, so, but yeah, we're getting close to the last one here. And we'll see, <laughs> what do we have here? Okay, I can already tell here. Let's look at this. Wow, okay, yeah, that's look, it's close to the original, but it's definitely deviating. And then when I go to the next one, that one's different. And we can see each one of these things slightly different. They look pretty similar, similar to the same face, but different enough. Yeah, that, that's really good. So again, let's remember, um, we were over here, that's the original image that we generated. If we go over here, and this is what we ended up with. Um, so it's, it's really cool. So you have that power of discrete changing using A1111. And there's so much more I could show you. Uh, Control Net, LoRa's, and maybe we'll do all of that in another video. But um, let me show you one last thing that I did. I um, did the same exact prompt. Um, same exact seed, um, but different models in 512 by 768. So these are these are taller. And so this is what we got. Um, over here is the realistic vision, uh, which I just used. Um, here, this is the Rev animated, which has that more stylistic anime look. Um, and then this is the uh, cyber realistic, which is also realistic, but a little bit more leaning towards fantasy. And then over here on the left, <laughs> yeah, that, that's just the base Stable Diffusion 1.5. So it definitely shows you the value of using the appropriate checkpoint, but it has its own value. Maybe I'll use that for Halloween. <laughs> so anyways, um, I, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, like the video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and then also join us on Discord. We have a great Discord. Uh, go to discord.gg forward slash Intel. It's for PC enthusiasts. And we have a an emerging gen AI community there that they're doing great work, much better than I'm doing here. And it would be fun for you guys to join. But anyways, that's a wrap for me. I'm Bob Duffy and we'll catch you later.